Hi, good evening. Welcome along to an earlier edition of the Transfer Show. Melissa Reddy and Michael Bridge were almost caught up, but they are here to guide you through the day's top stories as Premier League managers prepare for a frantic couple of days with a full round of fixtures and, of course, deadline day on the horizon. The boys love this place. It's uh, deadline day on Thursday. Are you excited? Is he fit to be available for it? Yeah, apparently we'll be selected, yeah. Don't worry. You can worry. Just for you at home, don't worry. Must be close to 99.99, 9, maybe. I'd say unlikely on both fronts without really anything out. And the only annoying part is that it's you. Sorry, Jürgen. Now, there are five Premier League games this evening. Team news coming in all the time. Arsenal are at Nottingham Forest. Aston Villa take on Newcastle. Palace play Sheffield United in what is a vital game at the bottom. Fulham Everton at Craven Cottage and Brighton Fulham. All right, let's start with Liverpool, though. Jurgen Klopp has called for calm over concerns that some of the club's best players could follow him out of Anfield. Virgil van Dijk's contract runs out in the summer of 2025, and this week the defender expressed doubts about whether he'll be at the club for the post-Klopp rebuild. There's enough time to do everything. These players love to be here. Don't forget that. It's not that they are out on one foot out. That they want to know a little bit about perspective, but that's there and it will happen. And it will happen especially behind the scenes. And the only annoying part is that it's you. Because everything is fine just because we have constantly answered questions. It sounds like, we have, what's going on there? Why they don't do that? Why they don't do that? Why they don't do that? Because things, especially the important things, need time. So it's all fine. Don't worry. You can worry, just for you at home, don't worry. Um, and um, it's, it's fine. The boys love this place. Um, I know that for, for, for a fact. And um, the rest, when will what happen, we will see. Right, Melissa, it, Klopp's telling us not to worry. No rush. It's all our fault, the media. But actually, Liverpool fans could worry, perhaps should worry. And there is a rush because... Three of his top players are going to be out of contract fairly soon and Liverpool need to get on with it. Do they not? Jürgen Klopp is right in saying that it's a completely normal situation because when a player has 18 months left to run on a deal, that's when a club usually just starts thinking about the negotiation process and then it moves from there. He's also right in saying that Virgil van Dijk, when he was asked about his future, didn't really have time to process the news yet that... Jürgen Klopp was leaving and what that could mean for his own future. But where there's a departure from the manager's position and the reality of the situation is he says nothing has changed from him breaking the news that he won't be there from the end of the season anymore till afterwards. And I mean, everything changes. Liverpool will be a different looking club beyond just who's in the hot seat in the dugout. The backroom team will change, you know, in terms of coaching staff, new sporting director. And so the players are unsure of what that will look like and how they will fit into it. What I will say is that Virgil van Dijk will also be considering his age and that of Mohamed Salah and whether that fits in with the long-term direction Liverpool want to take because the club have been reluctant in the past to hand out contracts to players who are after 30 years old. But in saying that, Van Dijk's in the form of his life. Salah is an absolute machine. And then the other player, Trent Alexander-Arnold, is really the symbol of Liverpool. And for me, he's the banker. I think he's the one that knows that he will be carrying that club forward and... Not just because he's a hometown hero. I think just the player that he is and what he feels for that team and how he's adapted and grown both as a right back and as a midfielder in that hybrid Isn't role. he going to be the one that lots of clubs will be circling trying to get out of Liverpool, though? Of course, he will be. His talent demands it, and why not? But I think not just with Trent. I think with all three players, it would take something really special even in a new-look Liverpool, to drag them away. Because of the bonds that have been created, because of how their careers have de developed there. And when I say something significant, I don't just mean in a financial sense. I think it really needs to stir them in a competitive sense. Because, like I said, Van Dijk and Salah, even though 
you know, they're towards the latter end of their careers. They're both in sensational nick and know that they are elite players. OK, all right, I want to break away from the Liverpool chat um, because Arsenal at Nottingham Forest, a player we've spoken quite a bit about in this window, starts for Arsenal. Tell us, Michael. Yeah, Emil Smith-Rowe starts for Arsenal tonight. His first start since October. So a big night for him, a big night for Arsenal, a big night for Forest, of course, as well. Premier League back after the FA Cup weekend. There were doubts about uh, Declan Rice and Gabriel. They start as well. Kai Havertz is on the bench. So I'll go through very quickly. David Raya, Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel Zinchenko, Rice, Emil Smith-Rowe, Martin Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli and leading the line, Gabriel Jesus. That's the Arsenal team ahead of Nottingham Forest tonight. I'm so glad you did that because I always mess up team news. So thank you very much. Right, I want to talk Chelsea. Melissa, um, their business depends on outgoings. Are there developments, though, tonight? Maurizio Pochettino will be watching and Chelsea fans as well, thinking, you're saying developments, <laughs> not the kind that we were after. So they've rejected a straight loan deal, unsurprisingly, for Amanda Breuer. They've been quite clear, Chelsea, that they'd prefer a sale. The offer came in from Wolves. They want a sale or, at the very least, an obligation to buy. Now, there are other clubs that have been circling around Breuer. Fulham have been one of them. And the issue for players, not just clubs, is that everyone needs to trim from their fringes before they can sign. So everyone's just looking at PSR and trying to balance it out. And that's not just affecting clubs that still want to do business, but players who you know, are trying to sort out their futures. Well, I'm glad you said that. Well, I'm not, because I'm sick of PSR. <laughs> but Newcastle, they must be sick of it too, because they want a midfielder in, can't get one until they sell somebody. The Saudi window closes at 9 o'clock this evening. Miguel Almiron, does he stay or does he go, Michael Bridge? Well, it looks very likely he's going to stay now. He's in the squad to face Aston Villa tonight, and we'll get the team news in a few minutes. So stay with us on Sky Sports News as the team news comes through all the Premier League games tonight. But he does stay it seems he wasn't overly keen on a move to Saudi. And out of all the players we talked about over these last few weeks, about players potentially leaving, we had Kieran Trippier, which was, seemed to be a real worry for Newcastle United fans. Then Callum Wilson, that would have left Newcastle United short. So perhaps it was Almiron, the one Newcastle might have prepared to let go. That doesn't look to be the case anymore. Now, Newcastle fans are going to be concerned. Why? Because they look a little bit light in midfield, Sean Longstaff and Lewis Miley. Miley has been absolutely fantastic, but at that age, in an ideal world, you probably want him to be on the bench a few times, not starting every single week. Also, there's a little worry, Bruno Guimaraes, he's, he's close to a suspension if he picks up an extra yellow card. So they wanted an extra midfielder in there. We've talked about Newcastle week after week in January. Remember, Darren Hills, I think the first week of January, talked about it. It's not just us saying it, it was Newcastle United yeah. talking about PSR. What a story it's been this month about maybe no one coming in, no one going out, but it's still been fascinating. Yeah, and of course, Joe Linton is injured, which is a real issue for them. Um, so, Michael, no change at Newcastle. They play Aston Villa tonight, though, but they are closing in on a new signing. So yes, tell us more. Yeah, Villa fans walk into Villa Park tonight. You know, they're going to be happy because they've agreed a deal with Middlesbrough to sign winger Morgan Rogers. It's understood the deal could be worth around £16 million if the add-ons are reached. Now... That's a, lot of, that's a lot of profit for Middlesbrough because they signed him for £1 million and, of course, they signed him from Manchester City so they benefit from a sell-on clause as well. Yeah, they do good business, City. Um, a deal in the balance now. Michael Nooser at Brentford, on or off? Yeah, Antonio Nooser, that's looking unlikely. Um, look, we reported on Sunday here on Sky Sports News that Brentford seemed the preferred destination for him. It looked like the perfect move. But, unfortunately, there are a few back and knee issues at the moment. Now... So many transfers still happen, don't they, Melissa, when, when, when there are complications or, or concerns with injuries, yeah. then potentially there might be some kind of change in the deal monetary-wise and other factors. It does look like it's on hold at the moment. Thomas Frank didn't want to discuss it today. Yeah, um, Melissa, just explain that for us, because people think you pass or fail a, um, a fitness test at a medical, that's the word I was looking for. But you don't know, do you? It's just whether the club looks at you and decides if they want you or not. So, yeah. so what happens next with Noosa? 
it's how big the risk is and whether it's worth the risk to take. Now, he's obviously a very talented player and has a lot of football ahead of him. Now, a lot of clubs will have insurance and it's based on what your insurance is saying about injuries or potential long-term injuries. And we've seen lots of circumstances where you have a club that's in for a player, doesn't do as well in the medical as they would have hoped, and they decline a deal because of their circumstances, what they can make work, not only in terms of their insurance, but we're paying a hefty salary for this. Can we do this if we don't have the player's availability? One uh, example that comes to mind is Loic Remy. Liverpool pass on him, Chelsea sign him, because for them, it wasn't an issue. They were happy to absorb the risk financially they could. So there's a lot of things that, that may still happen because he had so much interest in him. But I think clubs, because of his age, would also be relaxed enough to wait in the summer and see, you know, if there are any changes with those issues. OK, um, let's talk Nottingham Forest. Never shy of a transfer, Forest. The link with Gio Reyna, what's the latest on that? So they have another club in the mix to deal with in terms of fighting for him. Fiorentina, the latest to enter the equation. We had Marseille also trying to negotiate a deal with Borussia Dortmund for Gio. Now, the thing is, Forrest have been there from the off. They were the first to register interest and probably went the hardest. However, without a concrete offer, <laughs> close your ears now. <laughs> it's because of PSR. <laughs> they need, like everyone else, to offload before they can get him in. And so what that has done, because they've not gone in with anything concrete, is allowed other clubs to start muscling in and doing the negotiations with Dortmund. Now, Sky Germany were reporting that Gio's given verbal assurances to Forrest, but that means nothing if they don't actually follow up with the deal. So a lot of options for him to choose from. And I'm sure, actually, that there'll be more before the window closes. OK, another player, um, Oral Mangala and a link to Forrest. What's that one, Michael? Yeah, Leon in talks to sign him, and it could be a big money deal. We're talking about big money here, around 20 million euros. He's been wanted by several clubs. Our colleagues in Italy are saying Napoli as well. So we talk about Nottingham Forest and, and certain PSR issues. That, that, that looks like big money that they might find hard to turn down. OK, uh, time for a break. Now, uh, there has a deal. Before we do that, though, a deal has gone through. Luton completed the signing of Daiki Hashioka for just under £2 million. He will become the first Japan international to sign for Luton. Right, when we come back, we're going to talk Marcus Rashford, Kylian Mbappe, and round up the rest of the day's transfer news. Could be busy for West Ham. See you in a moment.
Hi, welcome back. Breaking news. Melissa Reddy, what have you got? Yes, Nathaniel Phillips from Liverpool. He's joined Cardiff City on loan, if you'll remember. He was at Celtic earlier on in the campaign, now at Cardiff City for the rest of the season. They've already got the interviews out on their website, so you don't have to worry about PSR for that one. It's signed, sealed, delivered. I'm going to ban you from saying those three letters. Right, in a statement last night, Manchester United said that Marcus Rashford had taken responsibility for his actions. After reports emerged, he was seen in night spots in Northern Ireland on Wednesday and Thursday of last week. He then didn't train on Friday because he was ill and didn't feature in the FA Cup win over Newport. Now, that behaviour, is that going to be worn by Ineos? It's completely against the culture that they want to create at Manchester United moving forward. They've done a lot of due diligence on all areas of the club as they look to change and overhaul the football structure of it. And that's not just in terms of the personnel there, but what has been allowed to fester in terms of the dressing room and continuous breaches of rules of a manager's authority. Now, United have had so many high profile cases of differing degrees for these off field issues. And what Rashford has to be very wary of is because sometimes players assume that it's just a manager that they might fall foul of. And I think a lot of them think, I can outlast a manager, especially if he's under pressure. But when you're at odds with the culture that the club are trying to create, the new direction they want to take, then it's a completely different scenario and situation. Now, we reported on Sky Sports News in December that part of the new direction Ineos will take is how they approach their contracts process. That's with renewals, with extensions, but also terminations because they think to themselves, well, why are you holding on to a player to try and get a financial gain from them if they're not contributing to the standards you want to set, that ecosystem of excellence, as you call it? They've looked at Arsenal as an example where Arsenal have cut ties with so many players and that's helped them build a better squad, a better environment and more sustainability in everything that they want to do. So yeah, R Rashford, world-class player or has the potential to be and he needs to steer more in that direction than going the other way, which is just a hiding to nothing. But people will say that's just words because they didn't cut ties with Jadon Sancho. They didn't just get rid of him. Yeah, to be fair to United, they didn't really get tested in that regard because Ineos' stake in the club was only confirmed to the New York Stock Exchange on December 24th and Borussia Dortmund provided Sancho with an exit route. If that exit route didn't materialise and they still had him knocking about, say, come the summer, then there would be a decision and then we could judge how, you know, invested they are in creating this culture of excellence, in ridding people, even if it comes at a financial cost. OK, staying with United, Michael, you've got news of an outgoing. Yeah, quick one here, Mike. Um, Granada and United are close to an agreement for a straight loan for the signing of winger for Kundo Palistri. Once the deal is finalised, he'll travel to Spain for a medical. Now, before we move on, there's some team news with Everton as well. Uh, they're at Fulham tonight. This starts with Ben Godfrey, Arnout Danjuma and Ashley Young. No Amadou Anana. Now, we've talked about him on the transfer shows over the last couple of weeks, but don't think there's any concerns for Everton here. We understand it's a knock picked up uh, over the last few days against Luton, but obviously that does leave Everton quite light in midfield. But tonight starts for Ben Godfrey, Arnott Danjuma and Ashley Young. They face Fulham at Craven Cottage tonight. Excellent, thank you. Right, we're going to talk Kylian Mbappe. Everyone's been speaking about Kylian Mbappe this month. Now the La Liga president has joined in. What has Javier Tabas had to say? Well, he says Mbappe has a more than 50% chance of joining Real Madrid. More than 50? Like, why, why say something <laughs> if that's what you're going to say? Um, having spent the back end of, of last year in Paris, trying to figure out from people that are close to Mbappe's inner circle, from the journalists who cover PSG quite well, how they think the situation is going to materialise, it was quite heavily felt that he will go to Real Madrid, but he will forego all his loyalty bonuses. 
which is a lot of money because PSG's big issue was Mbappe said he'd never leave us for free. However, the patch that cover PSG, report on them every week, say with that club, you just never know because there is so much sway and so much power to change a player's mind, as we and Real Madrid have already seen. They were at the point of talking through his unveiling last time out when he shocked them with his U-turn to remain at Paris. So, so we will see. Now, Tottenham did their business early in the window, and despite hopes they could add another midfielder, Ange Postacoglu says it's unlikely they'll do any more business. Look, unlikely, I'd say. Um, um, yeah, I don't see any incomings. Outgoing's a little bit different because I kind of, I'm not sort of totally sort of engaged with that. Other people are doing the work around that. Um, I'd say unlikely on both fronts without ruling anything out. So all quiet at Spurs, Michael. What about Crystal Palace? Are they going to have a busy end to the window? I think there might be potentially one or two outgoings with Spurs over the next couple of days. But, yeah, in terms of incomings, you're right. Uh, yeah. Spurs or Palace? I'm talking so, Palace. Sorry, Spurs, yeah, just before we moved on. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, Palace, Daniel Munoz. Good news for Palace today. Ahead of a big game tonight against Sheffield United. Daniel Munoz uh, from Genk, around 8.5 million. We had Tim Vickery on earlier Palace fans, if you missed it. He said, good signing, Palace fans, so they'll be happy going to Selhurst tonight. And they'll be even happier because Adam Wharton is close to signing. £18 million from Blackburn with £4 million add-ons. John Tell Thomas will be absolutely gutted about this, that they rate him extremely highly at Blackburn Rovers, but a few financial issues there. So Palace will hope to get that sealed. And we'll hear more from Roy Hodgson in his post-match press conference, post-match later tonight. All right, um, as usual, we've got to gallop through the end of the show. Uh, West Ham, are they going to be busy? Because you keep telling me they are. Yeah, well, I think if, if we had a little predictor... Uh, mm -hmm. Over who would probably be the busiest? I would probably say West Ham. They're looking to which is which is heartbreaking for him because he's at Tottenham on deadline uh, day, which is why he wants to keep. No, making, no, making no I think Spurs, no, Spurs have done some really good business. So you, you just never say never. <laughs> Cheers. Oh. <laughs> right, yes, a potential deal for Vajota, who Celtic fans know very well. Uh, that's looking difficult though with with the financial and tax implications. They are looking to bring in potentially someone along the wings. Ibrahim Osman is someone they're still looking at. Side Ben Rama. So they're talking about outgoings as well on the forward line as well. Close to agreeing a deal with Leon over his signing. 15 million they're talking about here. So Leon looking to spend. Uh, we, we talked about obviously that they're interested in a couple of Premier League players. Maxwell Cornet is interest from Nottingham Forest, and Raul Betis are advancing in talks to sign Pablo Fornals. That's why I think West Ham could be busy. Nice. Uh, Melissa, we've got 20 seconds, but a phrase I never thought I'd say. <laughs> Syria are interest in the Plymouth player. Tell us. Yes, they have immediately rejected a bid from Lazio, so he's for, not going anywhere. For, for Morgan, Morgan Whitaker. Whitaker. Wow. OK. Right. Soccer special is coming up after us. We've got an array of superstars waiting to take you through the evening. They'll do well to follow us, though, won't they? Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. It's yeah. been quite, quite a constricted but uh, full transfer show. Yeah, trans um, soccer special coming up next. Uh, Julian Warren will take you through the evening's football, and there's bundles of it. Enjoy. <laughs>